Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. The time they tried to promote me. There's an app for that, part 2. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. The time they tried to promote me. This is a bit more office politics than tech, but it's worth sharing. Years ago, I mind-numbingly sorting tickets escalated to various engineering departments that haven't been addressed in months. It's one of my tasks as senior staff that I like to spend some time on when I don't feel like talking to anyone. They're so busy with emergencies and understaffed that they almost never get to the tickets until they get an email reminder that they've been sitting there for months. Everyone should know if you want something done the same year you call them, you don't send a remedy ticket. Out of the blue the department director stops by, makes small talk for a few minutes and invites me to lunch. I'm surprised. I get business lunches with managers, but not with directors, at least not since we had one I was good friends with. This one I just have a professional relationship with. And when I temporarily filled in as union steward a few years before, and he was still a manager, we had a few lively arguments, water under the bridge as far as I'm concerned, but still. He's not one to show emotion either, who knows if that is mutual. But anyhow, fully expense lunch with martinis at a steakhouse while I'm paid on the clock? No matter what, I can't turn that down. We discuss the department and operations a bit, he says my work is getting lots of praise from my manager, and then the purpose becomes clear. Director, you know, you were very effective when you filled in as steward, you showed me you know the game, and you are very versatile. You can keep a cool head and put your foot down when you need to. Ever been interested in management? For a second I'm surprised, I just came back from an extended sick leave months before, I'm well known to be close to the union, they usually are the ones to take me out to lunch, and I'm very good at my job, but I have no experience in management whatsoever. But union employees are allowed to fill in on an interim basis with a nice 20% bonus for several months, and it could get me in some meetings I'd be interested to sit in and behind some interesting closed doors. At that point they must resign to become full managers. I have no intention of resigning from my union position, but if I can play it right. Slash you slash bite wave, yeah, given the right conditions I could very well be, it could be a fun new challenge. We'd need to negotiate a few details. My current seniority would have to be carried over. I'd want my compensation package bump to take into account the considerable money I'm currently making from overtime and be guaranteed as much time off as I have right now, and the usual. I get slightly sweaty palms, thinking I'm probably going in a little hard because of the martinis. It's still just the interim time I'm after. Wear a suit for six months, then turn a contract down and go back to my job. Could be fun and very informative. Director, full seniority might be an issue, you'd be bumping most managers in terms of schedule, but we could work something out. The rest would be perfectly doable. Slash you slash bite wave, I could concede partial seniority and definitely be willing to work some graveyard shifts while I'm on my interim basis. After all, that's usually how it goes when they promote from the union. Director, interim basis? No, we're talking about terms for a contractual basis. Usually we start with six months, but given your background and seniority I'm perfectly comfortable to double that. A one-year contract? That means I'd have to resign from the union, and he can throw my eyes out in a year if he wants. The math adds up in a flash. He didn't like me as a union rep, he knows I'm still unofficially feeding the union all sorts of stuff, I've been gone nearly a year, and since my paperwork was good I got full pay, I don't actually know how much he still dislikes me. The amount of money he readily suggested he was fine with is much higher than what a low-level suit gets. Either he's trying to buy me out to cut me off from the union and get some intel on his own, or it's a long con to not renew me in a year on some bullsh asterisk t performance excuse. Slash you slash bite wave, I see. There is plenty of precedent for letting union members have an interim basis before they resign though. Given it's a new challenge, I want to be certain I'm fully tooled for this exciting opportunity before we sign a contract. 
Doesn't need for be six months, but I'd say at least three or four. Then I'm happy to go for the 12 months contract if we're both satisfied with my performance and the experience. He pauses with a poker face. Director, unfortunately, I can't really offer that right now. I need some form of commitment. There's been too much flux in my management team of late. Yeah, if you didn't hire idiots, you then have to fire because they're the only ones who will do the job for the kind of cheap money you want to pay them, your turnover rate would improve substantially. I keep that thought to myself though. Slash you slash bite wave, it's still an exciting offer, but unfortunately I'm not willing to resign right away, it's a bit of a leap given I lack full management experience and my midterm financial commitments. I'm still thrilled you thought about me though. Once the turnover rate settles down, if you're willing to consider an interim period as we used to do, I'd be honored. Poker face still. Director, well thank you, I appreciate your frankness, and should that become possible in the future, it seems we'll be having lunch again. On to other matters then, I wanted to know if you've seen the rural expansion plans, we wanted senior staff to review a few details. And the rest was just business as usual. Just because I'm paranoid doesn't mean he wasn't out to get me. My money is on the notion that unless I was willing to spill union beans, that could have marked the first day of my last year at the company. And you don't get rid of me this easily. All of ByteWave's tales on TFTS. There's an app for that, part 2. Following up on this story with the long story of what happened after the meeting where I suggested installing hard to remove anti-theft software on all devices because of a long thieving spree in our offices. First of all, the decision was to be kept as hush-hush as possible as to avoid scaring away the thieves. We had a problem, not only was the amount of devices stolen insane despite locked doors and manager surveillance, but the same security measures appeared to work fine for all our contractors, who reported very few thefts. And it's quite humiliating to admit when they're doing something better than us. So in great secrecy, senior staff got to work behind closed doors. Since I suggested it, I was obviously asked to oversee the process. Life lesson keep your mouth shut in meetings if you don't want more work on your plate. All the devices with our bloatware on it were trivial to update with non-factory resettable anti-theft software, I just pulled all the MAs of all the labs and had systems push a targeted update over the air. The others required manual tempering with a slightly infamous software I can't name here, which saved us the trouble of rooting them. But we needed to handle those manually, some of us traveled to the few of our call centers where there are no senior staff to do it. I got a nice train ride and a paid hotel night and a couple free meals out of it. We also removed all Wi-Fi-only tablets from every lab, as they couldn't be monitored. Soon after we caught a frontline employee red-handed. I monitored remotely a stolen phone only to notice it was still on the grounds of the office, the phone had been marked as lost for two days. The anti-theft software showed it was now using a SIM from a competitor. Clear-cut case of theft for personal use, which is the most stupid thing to do. He tried to argue he just forgot to put it back and had put in a competitor's SIM for a test, but the evidence was overwhelming. He had brought it home and sent personal texts with it and had imported his personal data. He was swiftly escorted out without his phone, with only his SIM and the clothes on his back. But this was very worrisome, as the worst-case scenario here was precisely that random workers all over the place were just stealing one or two phones and tablets here and there for personal use. That would have been crazy, especially if the thieves proved to be mostly union employees. Few days later, a dating-enabled tablet goes missing along with a phone in one of our call centers, and same deal at another soon after. They stay dead, simless slash powered down, for a while, more thefts. After a few weeks, we were up to nine tracked stolen devices that had not yet been powered back on, and I was starting to sweat a bit. Wouldn't look good if my idea ultimately just delayed a solution for two months. Every day, I'm checking the list. Then we finally get a hit, one of them is live on the other side of the country with a different carrier. We have a team, competition, that serves as the contact point for pretty much anything related to other ISPs, carriers, and what have you when we need to talk to each other, 
I let them in the loop so that they can report this and get more information. Soon there are four live devices, then six, never on our network, and I start getting reports back from competition. Each person now in possession of a device is in a different part of the country, or south of the border, and they all have the same story of having brought it online from sources like Kijiji without meeting the former owner. I breathe a sigh of relief. The first guy was a fluke, there's someone organized masterminding mass theft. I present these conclusions to my increasingly concerned boss, because whoever is organizing this has to have people in each of our call centers getting past closed doors easily, that's a hell of a lot of work for rather slim pickings if you split it with so many people. And why would our subcontractors not be plagued too? I can't take credit for cracking this one. The oldest senior in the department, the one we have to thank for the senior perk, is sitting nearby as I chat with the boss and casually asks. The senior senior, the subcontractors, do they use the same company we do for cleaning? The silence was deafening. Nobody knew the answer for sure but. The theory was good. I put my headset on and called the bat phones of three of our contractors, who all confirmed they either had their own janitor or contracted cleaning to another company than ours. Then I take the list of the recorded thefts. Could be that one or two people for the cleaning company are behind it all, they do tend to go unnoticed, and they have keys. Can't fathom we didn't think of this earlier. Swept in the enthusiasm of solving this for good, I asked for the cleaning schedules of all our offices, and for once in my career got told well that's not really in your job description rather than say well that's not really my job description. Fair enough. Internal security investigates. Two days later we notice the bathrooms are getting dirty. I ask a random manager about it and get we're changing cleaning companies at the moment, it'll be done later today. That was pretty much rubber stamped confirmation. The next day, an email to all management and senior staff by internal security largely taking credit for the whole thing, with a footnote thanking senior staff for our help at least, explained that the thefts over the last years had been tracked down to a small number, possibly just two people, from the cleaning company that services all our offices. In addition to phones and tablets, they were suspected of other thefts up to stealing alcohol from an upper management private room at headquarters, and that legal was now handling the matter. The team's estimation was that over 35k worth of equipment had been lost before we figured it out. They were very good at covering their tracks until we could track everything. They smuggled out the loot in trash bags and resold it online on local resale websites, no eBay, after letting it cool down a little. They had a system to ensure it would be very unlikely to end up back on our own network unless resold again. They used throwaway accounts and emails. They really loved pilfering Wi-Fi-only tablets where the risk was zero. They also cleaned our head-ends, but were smart enough to avoid stealing hard to resell specialized equipment from a place where access is so tightly controlled that they were likely to get caught. As soon as this was shut down, theft of devices became virtually unheard of. We stopped installing new countermeasures after a while, and now we're very lax about locking and watching the lab. It can't hurt of course that after this story got around, all the frontline employees are convinced that everything is tracked tightly, after all.